All right. Here's an English, so our sí. people can follow us. And the idea of this quick video is to introduce or to kind of show a solution of our hangman project, actually the second one, because we have two hangman projects. And it's kind of a, on purpose, we try to show you a more imperative solution of what we usually do or how we usually, how, how we would code a solution in an imperative way for the same game and how we're gonna then transition or create a solution in an object-oriented programming way. And it's a really interesting thing to compare both and to understand the differences and the advantages of one over the other. I'm here with Gonzalo. We both speak Spanish, but we're speaking English only for you folks. So the idea again is we're gonna start with the Hangman project. If at any moment uh, there are questions or we need to focus in particular, tiny, tiny topics related to object-oriented programming, we will do it. Um, so this is the project as you have it. I have already cloned the solution. And by the way, I will be working with it locally. This is my Atom. And I will try to, I don't know if I can increase the size of this. There you go. So it's gonna be a little bit larger. And I will be working locally. I have the project already installed, right? And I have just created the virtual environment. Remember, I'm gonna to try to increase the size a little bit, not that much. There you go. And as usual, we're gonna install the requirements, which in this project are just here in dev requirements. So minus R dev requirements. And it's gonna take a second. And we're pretty much ready to get started. I have two terminals here. I don't think it's necessary. It's kind of a, something that I'm used to. And I just do it automatically. So we have three main files for tests. And this is a really important thing. Once, once we start working with object oriented programming, it's gonna be more important for you to read the tests and make sense out of the tests and kind of understand the interface of what we're asking you to build by looking at the tests, right? And this is something that's gonna be really common as you start making more progress. And for example, when you start working with someone else's code, it's gonna be really important for you just to sit, look at the code and kind of read like in the matrix, the movie, like you can see the code and understand what's going on behind the scenes and translate the code into business requirements that's going to be a key, a key scale for you uh, in the future. Reading the code and without much effort translating it into the, again, business requirements. I'm speaking business, but um, in a more general term, like what's going on behind the scenes. We have three test files because we have three big parts in this project. One of them is the Hangman game. And this will be the last file that we will try to work with. And then we have the guess word test, and we also have the guess attempt um, test. And these two are a little bit related. Um, actually, we will see, for example, here, we will have guess word and perform attempt. So if, the, if, we could, if we could kind of draw a hierarchy of the classes that are related, the guess attempt is the one that it's kind of the leaf. It's the one that it's not related to anything else. So it's usually a good idea to start with these classes that are kind of isolated because you can make all these tests pass by just focusing only in this guess attempt class, right? That's gonna be the idea. But before I do that, I wanna show you really quickly, let me see if I can, here you go. I have a, a Hangman game um, running and working and we could, um, I want you to kind of also try to picture it in the real game. And actually we can probably try doing that. I'm gonna create a new drawing, there you go. So simple Hangman game, we have to guess the ABC word, which is pretty simple, right? So if you're 
playing with someone, you're going to have three spaces, four words, and then you have five attempts remaining. That's how we're going to play this game. Every time you want to guess the word, so I'm playing with Gonzalo, for example, and he tries to guess the next, the next word, we will be using this game interface that we have created to perform a new guess. So we use the game that we constructed, and we're going to do game.guess. And this is going to create a new guess, a new guess attempt, sorry, this attempt object. So every time that, in this case, Gonzalo tries guessing a new word, we will create an individual structure. It's going to be an attempt, we can call it, that will have the word, no, the letter, sorry, that was um, guessed. And also we will know if it's a hit or a miss, right? We, we, we don't know yet, so these are question marks. This object that we're creating, this structure has kind of, a, of its own life. It's a, it's a completely separated class. Once I have created this attempt, I can ask things to it. Can I ask, um, for example, if it's a miss, if it's a hit, I can also ask if, um, what's the letter, etc., and that and that's kind of isolated. This class is isolated without the game, right? Completely different structures is isolated in this. Uh, where is it? Uh, perform guess word plus perform attempt classes. So in these two files, we have these two. This is a guess attempt, completely isolated, and it's the class that I show you before, and that's why I told you it's kind of it's kind of a leap. You can work with it and you can solve these, this sole class by itself. Now we're going to start understanding the interface of this class. What things I can do with the class? What, what questions can I ask? Basically the methods. What data is stored within this class? Basically the attributes, right? So every class will have methods and attributes. Methods are actions that I can perform. Attributes are going to be the data that it's stored in the class. So in this case, we know just by looking at this um, guess attempt, we see how to create it, right? So in this case, you have the class and you have then immediately parentheses and this is the init method of your class. It's the first thing you see. How am I gonna create this class? And usually classes might be created with different set of attributes. So it's important to immediately understand all the possible options you have to create a class. In this case, you can create it with a letter plus hit or with a letter plus miss. These are two different possibilities to create a class. And you can also see that if you try to create it with the letter plus both miss and hit, an exception is gonna be erased. And that's of course gonna make your code fail. So this is not a valid option. Summary, we can create this, the init method, if I could picture in my head the init method of this class, it's gonna look something like f init letter, and then I'm gonna have hit and miss, and when, sorry, there we go. When I pass hit and true, I'm not passing miss. And when I pass miss and true, I'm not passing hit. So what that means is that these two methods it's the attribute, sorry, they're both optional, right? So to make optional values, we need to provide the full value. So here I could do, for example, non and non, for example, it's one valid option. And something like this is gonna be the final init method within this guest attempt um, class. And why I'm showing this to you? Because the idea is that you're looking at the way the class is created and you're, again, immediately picturing the, the way the object is created and the interface that it's provided by that object. So this guess attempt will be the one that will be created by this guess word. So here what we're saying is that this regular simple game that we have, this whole thing, we are kind of cutting it in pieces, right? And we're separating it in different pieces. The first piece we saw was this guess attempt, which is kind of a, an isolated structure. It lives by itself. It's just a guess attempt. 
The other piece that we have is the guess word, which is part of a game, but it's kind of this thing right here. It's only the word, right? And how we create the guess word with only the word that we try to guess. The guess word doesn't know, for example, how many attempts you have remaining. It doesn't know how many options you have to guess. And that's a really important characteristic of object training the programming in general and when you're working with data and designing systems it's think about the responsibilities of each one of the objects in this case guess attempt has a really clear and tiny set of responsibilities it needs to store that attempt of guessing for example someone tried to guess the letter x on which word i don't know and i don't care this class is a really i don't care class it doesn't know anything but that's also really good because, fit, because implementing this class is extremely simple. We're gonna see the implementation of this in a second. It's gonna be a couple of lines, super simple. So you will construct your software and you will arrange your data in a way that it's kind of a huge Lego piece, right? So like a, a, huge, a huge Lego puzzle. It's just classes working one with each other and each one of them having a clear and tiny set of responsibilities. This is what I do, I don't care about anything else. I don't care the word. In this case, is a, this is kind of a counterintuitive example too. The guess attempt doesn't know which word the user was trying to guess. It just knows the word and if it was a miss or a hit. In the same way, the guess word, it's just this thing. It's this thing right here. I don't know about these, I don't know about anything else. So for example, I could use this same class to play another game. I don't know, maybe we can come up here with Gonzalo with other game. We can think about, I don't know, a variation of Kamen, whatever. And we can use this same class, we can reuse, and here's where, where uh, reusing code, it's so important. We can just keep our classes tiny isolated and reuse them in other designs and how does this guess word class work well you of course need to pass the word that you need to guess so in this case we know that it was a b c a b and c this is the word we need to guess once you have constructed this word you will be when you have here the object again i haven't mentioned this but uh once you see this, it's like you should start picturing the init method in your head. How, how can I construct a guess word? Once I create this, this guess word, and I have it right here, I, have a, I immediately see one important public method, the perform attempt. I can try guessing something. And what is this perform attempt doing? Returning this attempt, and this attempt, it's not something like, for example, true false. It's not um, one zero. It's actually one of these things, one of these a little bit more, more complex structures. It could have very much just return true or false. But in this case, we're trying to keep more convenient and how to put it, flexible structures. So instead of returning true or false, we return, we return something that is a little bit more accurate. It's a guess attempt. The user tried to guess this word, and the guess was either hit or a miss. Word.perform method, perform attempt, sorry. It's the first method of the guess word. It's a really important method. We also see that the word object has a masked attribute, this one right here. This masked attribute is basically generated from this word. I passed this word and it created a mask. And actually, I tried guessing one of them. I guessed correctly. I know because is hit is true. And now the mask has that word unveil, if you want. It just was unveil in that case. So again, the init method in this case is going to be super simple. We will need to, of course, work with this perform attempt and we will need to work with this mask. But then again, we keep cutting our implementation into smaller pieces so we can focus only in these smaller pieces. 
And once you have all these, you will kind of create a larger object, which puts together the whole thing. It uses the, the guess word and it uses the guess attempt to finally create a game. So this combination of pieces is finally the game. And the game, it's just an orchestrator. It's orchestrating different classes. Think about a car. Think about a car. Do you, can you, do you have a car, like a piece car? A car is just a combination of pieces. It's, there is no car, it doesn't even exist. It's a word that we give to this combination of pieces, right? We have a tire, we have a wheel, we have a seat, we have a door. This combination all together is what we call a car. In the same way, a game will be a combination of the guess word, the guess, the guess attempt, et cetera. Let me start first by going over the guess attempt. Are they clear, Gonzalo, any questions? Yeah, yeah, I, th I think they're clear. I mean, if you go back to the other one, uh, guess word. So you mentioned that uh, what uh, you, you have the class, guess word, and it receives a, param a parameter. And then, yep. you have some, and then you have some methods, right? And that's, yep. I'm sorry, if, if, if you go to the other one. Uh, guess attempt. Guess attempt, yes, yes, on word, yes. So, Mm, no, they look the same. Go back to the other one. Guess word again. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so this one. Uh, and then you have the perform attempt. You know that this is going, is going to be a method, right? This is a method. Yes. How do you know that's going to be a method? Or what's going to be what's going to be in the init in the init uh, clause or statement? Um, yep. As you mentioned, uh, so in the init statement will be at the high level. You see guess word, and you have Python. Yep. So, so you know, okay, this class passes uh, only one parameter. So that's gonna be, yep. that's gonna be a use yourself letter equal letter, right? Yep. And exactly. then you, and then you go down. It's okay. And then I have some classes, and that's how you break it down, right? Yep. Exactly. Exactly okay. like that. You. Okay. You start. First step is usually realizing how the object is constructed. Okay, and then when you go when when you go to the, the the few sentences below attempt is hit, then you realize okay that attempt is hit is coming from the other class that uh, that I already just built right on the other side right yeah. and that's and that's when you start seeing the connection between yeah. one and the other okay okay exactly. sounds good exactly like that. So let's start with guess attempt, which is I think the simplest one is going to take us a few. Um, a few lines is going to be resolved. Something that I haven't done yet is running the test. I will try, I usually run them and make them fail and see them failing first. There you go. Everything is failed. Mm -hmm. Has failed, sorry. I'm going to do this. It's going to be a little bit shorter. And now I'm going to focus in these class right here. And if I, again, check how it's constructed, it receives always receives a carter or a letter, and it receives sometimes hit and sometimes miss, miss, but it shouldn't be receiving both of them. This is what these tests are telling us. So here I'm gonna start the init method, we'll receive self, we'll receive a letter, we always receive that, and then we know that we receive both hit, none, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put a miss, also none, because they are both optional. I need at least one. We don't have a test here that looks, sorry, like this. We don't, we should. I, I actually, after we're done, I'm gonna add a, another test that if you pass this, it fails. But they are, so it's like a, a, like a X or, you know, it's like passing only hit is fine, passing only miss is fine, but passing both of them is a, is a failure. So one of them is always, it's going to be optional. So here um, we can actually start kind of with these tests and if we pass both of them we're going to make it fail. So how I could have written it, it would be something like if hit is true and miss is true, both of them have an N, I'm going to raise 
of uh, what is it? An invalid guess attempt exception. And the exceptions are right here. Invalid guess attempt is right here. It's already creative. So again, if it's hit and is miss, I will raise an exception. Make sense? Yes. In this case, we see that we have just fixed one test. We had now only two tests failing, one is passing. Actually, I could rewrite this and I could say only if hit and miss, because is true, it's kind of redundant, right? So I could say if hit and miss, both of them, and still the test is passing, so this is good. So then the other thing that happens is that I probably need to remember this, assign this attribute. So we'll do uh, self dot letter equals letter, for example. And then we have two methods, is miss and is hit, and they are not implemented. So here I'm gonna do def is hit self, and I'm gonna do the same thing for is miss. Miss, there you go. And if you check, they don't receive parameters, so that's also important. It's, this is kind of, kind of um, like reverse engineering. You're looking at what we have used and the way we've, we've used, and you have to figure out how to write it, basically. And of course, these will receive this information. So here we're gonna say, we're gonna keep self.hit equals hit, and self.miss, equals miss. And here we're gonna say something like, for example, if is if self.hit is true, I can do return true, return false, right? And I can do pretty much the same thing for is miss. And let's see if the tests are passing. There you go, all our tests are passing. Make sense? Yep. I could still do a little bit more refactoring here. This is redundant. This is redundant. There you go. Uh, it should still pass. And finally, this thing will be true or not. So I could also um, change it so I can do something like self return self dot hit or a little bit more smart, like, I don't know, different things. For now, I'll just leave it in this way because I think it's a little bit more readable. Let's check it once again. There you go, it's working. Mm -hmm. So now the guest word. And in this case, the guest word, again, the, what you were just saying, the first thing we see is they need method. We can actually start with it. I'm gonna go here, F, need self. I'm gonna call it word. We we'll receive a whole word and self dot word. I'm gonna keep it in word. I don't know if we have a restriction of in the name of the parameter, so I'll just use that one. Um, we see immediately two things. One of them is this masked method uh, attribute, sorry, and the other one is this perform attempt attribute. Uh, actually, when we create, oh yes, it's it's not word, it's Answer, there you go. So this is the first test that I will try executing, by the way. Let me actually run it. I'm gonna run only that test. There you go. It's failing. And it's failing, this is important. It's failing, it says uh, in line nine, in test, test guest word interface, line nine, here it's failing. It didn't fail here. If this was invalid, it could have failed before. It, it could have failed before. So it's failing here because I haven't yet coded the must word. And the must word is super simple. It's just the same length of this word, but all filled with stars. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is self dot, um, actually I can keep here, Python interpreter. So if you have X, Y, Z, right? You wanna create um, three stars, you just put the star character times three, or in this case, confusing that. 
two sports. So I'm gonna do mask equals star times the length of this word. And the test is passing. Hey Santiago, can you explain again the answer? How did you get the answer? Self this dot one? answer. Yeah, yeah. What where, where does where that one coming from? The first test right here. It's creating um a guess word class or instance actually and immediately it's telling you that once this thing is created it should have an answer attribute which is equals to whatever you passed and it should also have a mask attribute which is equals to all stars okay okay it's like the first uh, again it's where we are giving you requirements in this sort of tests where these are requirements I create so it's like I'm a I'm a special person I have special requirements and I create a word and I want to see this and you have to complain you know you have to make it pass right it's the way we're basically giving you those requirements right right but answer and mask they are not they are not a method right within the class They're attributes their attributes okay and the word before the answer is um, the object the, of of that one of guess word yep it's the instance we have created this should be in the same way i've just renamed it to object okay and it should be the same thing okay so the guess word class creates uh when, once you create an instance you have an attribute answer equals to this value and you have an attribute mask equals to this value. Great. Um, another test we can try. Let's actually try the second one. We can go in order in this case. Um, the test here is saying that if you try to create a guess word instance with an empty um, string, you should get a new valid word exception. So here I just need to do something like if for example, the length of the word is zero, I will raise this invalid word exception. Let's see if it passes, passes to me. I could actually do something like if not word, that's gonna be a little bit more readable. There you go, Keep it's, it's still passing. Um, now we are approached with these tags, and this is kind of a, a requirement that we face the first method of this class. And I think it's the first and only method that it has. But if we're going top down, this could be the first test we face. And it's once the object is created, it's going to have a perform attempt object that will receive. We see right here it's working, right here it's raising an exception. And that's because, of course, these are too many characters and this is only one character. So I will skip this one for now so we can focus in the, in the actual one. And in this case, perform attempt, right, receives only one letter. And I'm gonna go here and start implementing that one. It's gonna be def uh, perform attempt, self as usual, and letter is gonna be the other attribute, this attribute, it's going to be the letter that I receive. And this object, so sorry, this method will create a guess attempt object, this one that we have already working. But we need to construct this object. So here internally, I will do uh, attempt. It's going to be a guess attempt. I will create it. And I will finally return the attempt. All right, that's the objective. Of this method. Now the question is what do you pass here? How do you construct it? You're asking me Santiago? Yep, if you want to. Um... Well, it should be something related to the word dot answer or? Yes. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so in this case, for example, you have, let's think about two different examples. You have the word Python, 
right? We're going to use the same word, but two different examples. Example one and example two, right here. The first example, I try to guess the word why. In the example, in this example, I try to word the, the, to guess the word x. The guess attempts that you will create here and here could be different because obviously, in this case, guess attempts can have a y, and in this case, right here, it's going to have an x, right? But they are created with, with another parameter. Remember from the test, guess attempt is created with that character that was tried to guess and also either hit or miss. And in this case, what's going to be here? Of course, that hit equals true. And here it's a miss because the X character is not here. Mm -hmm. So you have to, of course, we are seeing these. We, we are just employing our human eyes to see that the Y is here. So this hit equals true and that X is not here. So we create miss equals true. So we need to basically translate these to Python. And for that, we will use the, let me see if I can. No. Given the Python word, I will use the in operator. So for example, I'm gonna do is y in Python true? Is x in Python false? All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. So here I'm gonna just do, if um, the letter that you try to guess, remember this letter right here, it's gonna be in this, in this case here, they try to guess with Y. So in that case, we're gonna do if letter in self that answer, we're gonna create the attempt and we're gonna pass, um, the letter that they try to create and hit equals true. Else, we're gonna create pretty much the same thing, but here we're gonna have miss equals true. And finally, we'll return the attempt. Make sense? Yes. Let me get rid of this. And let's actually get the test word with incorrect character. So this will fail. I'm gonna show you why in a second, but this will fail. But the important thing here is where it fail. All these lines were correct. And how can I know that? Because the test is actually telling me that it failed in line 32 when it tried to do word that must equals this thing. So right here, uh, where is it? Uh, line 32 here, when it tried to do this thing, it failed. But these, up to this point, my code is working. So the, what I need to do is I need to turn this must word, I basically need to unveil the character if the word is found in there. Um, so let me see if I have, no, if we have, I don't remember if we have any special method for that. No, we don't. So it's just up to us to come up with the idea. So, um, let me create a brand new file here. I'm going to call it main.py just to try a few things out. Oh, I kind of, um, unveil word pi it's gonna be cool um so having a word in this case python having a mask in this case uh word len of word times the star let me print the mask and the word both so you can see it python veil word there we go. So we have one star per character. I don't know if this will spell unveil. 
I don't know. You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> two Spanish speakers trying to come up with fancy words. All right, so um, this is the word, this is the map. So now I'm gonna have a letter and I wanna see letter, it's gonna be Y for example. And I want to turn mask into, I know what it should be. It should be star of the P, Y, because it's in veil, T, H, O, N. So this is my final result. There are many different things that I can do here. I could, um, I could start with an empty string, for example, and I can start iterating over the real word, right? I can start, or actually, I could start iterating over, over the mask. I am trying to come up with a clean solution that works for everybody without any fancy replacements. So if I start going over each one of the characters, Yes, let's start doing that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start it super simple and then I'm going to refactor into a more readable and Pythonic solution. We're going to start doing for i in range the length of the word, which is the same as the length of the mask, right? Really simple for loop. And here I'm going to get both things. The word letter, it's going to be from this word, the character in this position, and I'm going to do the mask letter. In this case, it's going to be from the mask, these um, words. So here, let me just print them, word letter and mask letter, mask letter, both of them. And there you go, you have each one of them here. I think this is still too tiny. Maybe there. There. So we still have the, the character with their corresponding letter. So here, I need to construct this string. I need to start putting there the words, the, sorry, the letters that I'm finding, finding. So what I'm gonna do is, if mask letter was already in veil, let's actually fake this. Let's say that the word is the mask is um, star, star, how many we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. The word is that and that. These are the ones missing. So if the word was already unveiled in a previous move, so if mask letter is different than star, if it's not a star, I'm gonna just put S plus equals the mask letter. In other case, that means that the mask letter is a star. What I'm going to do is check if this current letter they're trying to guess is already in, is part of the word. So I'm going to just put a leaf. The letter is in the word. I will put here the word letter. And finally, I can just skip this and print my S string. And sorry, and else, finally, finally, finally. So if it's a, if the word, the letter wasn't really unveiled, I will put that word, I will not touch it. In other case, if it's a star, for example, but the user is trying to guess that one, I will put the one that corresponds. In other case, it's a star and the user has the wrong answer, I will just put the star. And let's see what it looks like. Ooh, I did something wrong. Plus equals. Uh, I have too many things printed out. There you go. 
So we're unveiling the whole thing and that is because, so if the mask letter is not a star, uh, L if the letter, oh no. The letter is equals to that given letter that I just got, sorry, my bad. Let me try, there you go. Now it works. Um, sorry, does this change make sense? Yes. Okay, so that was my bad. So I'm just iterating over each one of the letters and if they make sense, I, I swap them. So what I'm gonna do is just def um, unveil word uh, answer mask and letter. I'm gonna turn it into a function. I'm gonna put this thing here and we're gonna finally return S. Uh, this is gonna be answer and this is gonna be mask. It's gonna be, that's it. So here we will do unveil word of word mask and for example y let's see if it works there you go worked or the o and it also worked so i can just take this thing i'm gonna speed up a little bit um i'm gonna copy this one and you can put it anywhere i could actually put it into a method so if i turn this thing into a method these two are already provided. It's gonna be self.answer, self.answer, and it's gonna be self.masked. There you go. So we're back into the test. This was again the line that was failed because we need to, if it's a uh, hit, we need to replace the mask with the new mask that we have. So here, what I'm gonna do is, um, if the attempt is successful, I'm going to do self.mask equals self.unveil word with this new letter. And let's see if it works, there we go. So our test is finally passing. Make sense, questions? Yeah, yeah, makes sense. No questions so far. Awesome, so we are finally ready to start approaching the hangman game by itself. Um, I don't know if we have any other tests failing. Let me just, I think we have a one or two more failing here. Um, so. Uh, uppercase, lowercase. Yeah, and False is true. This one is first. So this test is the one failing. There you go. So perform attempt. If the length of the letter is greater than one, raise, what is it? Invalid guess letter exception. Raise one of these. There you go, working, and we have a few other more. Uppercase, lowercase one. Uh, here, so these are um, case insensitive. So we need to just put a few lowers here and there. Um, basically, what we need to do is if uh, letter dot lower, is equals to the word letter dot lower. We're gonna append it slower, I think, because I think it just doesn't care about, about casing. There you go. And finally, uh, oh, no, yeah. The lower should be here. So before we even start, we're gonna do letter 
equals letter the lower. We're going to turn it into a lowercase. And here, we're going to do that. And I can still put here the There you go. I'm just turning any, everything to lowercase or mm -hmm. simple. Finally, we're pretty close. The hangman. The hangman game is again these, this structure that it's pretty much, pretty much holding all together. It's the one giving the rules, the business rules to the game. It's not doing a lot of work by itself. Again, the car is not doing work. The car is relying on the tires, on the doors, on the motor. In this case, the, the, guess, the handman game, it's just setting the rules. It's gonna say how many attempts you have left, uh, if you have won, if you have lost, etc. So let's start tackling the methods one by one. First one right here, this is one that is usually also uh, bringing a little bit of confusion. This is also another thing that you should kind of read and try understanding by the way we're using it. What you see here is a class and immediately after you see a method being applied. You see a dot, you see a name, you see parentheses. This is a method being applied to this class. That's why it's a class method, All right? So that's the, the idea. Um, the class method by itself, it's simple. It just receives a list of words and needs to select one randomly. So let's actually implement it. We're going to do select random word. Def select random word. We're going to make this thing a class method. And remember that if it's a class method, it's going to receive the class first and the word list second. This is the first method we can think of. And to solve it, we will use random. We're gonna do random dot choice of, in this case, sorry, wrong window. For example, this list gives you one randomly. So in this case, the only thing that we need to do is import random and here it will do return random dot choice of this word list. Can you explain again why we are using the class method for this? Yes, so this first, first off, to solve like a really pragmatic approach and view is because the test says it's so. So in this case, what I want you and everybody to understand is you're looking at this and you should immediately again, make the picture in your head of how this thing is implemented. Because again, class dot method or, or something and parenthesis, this is a method applied to a class. So that's kind of the technical answer. Why are you doing this is a little bit more complicated thing to answer. In this case, is because it's a utility function. It's not an instance attribute. It's not something that it's tied to an instance. You can make this thing work without even creating any instance. It's a utility function, so we decided to put it as a class method. Okay. Um, and it's, of course, a really subjective and arbitrary decision. It's like you could have said, maybe I prefer to make that a, a separate function, completely separate function. No, that's fine. It's a, it's a good design too. Um, so again, conceptually, we decided as uh, this thing wasn't particularly related to any particular instance or individual instance, it was going to be a class method. Mm -hmm. That's the conceptual explanation. Oh, now, the technical explanation is you have to make the test pass and the objective here is you read this line and you immediately understand that it's a class method. Because again, you have something 
before the dot, and that something is a class. It would be quite different if you saw something like, for example, um, here I'm going to put object, and you saw something object equals the class parentheses constructor. You have constructed an object, and then you see object dot the method. This is an instance method because what it's behind the dot or before the dot is the instance. In this case, it's just a regular class altogether. Make sense? Yep. Good. All right. So, uh, handman games. So, these, uh, let's use select random word. And we will run these three methods. This one is going to fail because we haven't even implemented it. So, here we're going to run the test. Test. Uh, handman game. And we're going to select everything that has a select random word. And two tests are passing, two tests are passing, and one is failing. This one is failing because we need one more check here that it's if word list, we're going to do if the length of word list is zero, return raise, sorry, this exception. We don't allow empty word lists. There you go, everything is passing. Um, again, I could have refactored this. If not word list, if there is nothing in this word list, basically when you have an empty list, you can ask that to raise the exception. Um, now, we are now facing the way the object is created. And again, the object Hangman game is a big orchestrator of the other classes we have already implemented. It's gonna hold the rules of the game and the work, the heavy work is gonna be done by guess attempts and um, guess words. So the first thing we see is the constructor of the game. It receives a list of words. Um, it has selected one of them. In this case, we have only one but for simplicity, right? Uh, because if, if you would be testing things randomly, you never know when that is gonna pass and when it's gonna fail. So in this case, we are selecting the, the sorry, we're passing the word and we know this is the first line. And actually, let me start implementing it here. So we read init self, we read this and we know that it accepts two parameters. Mm -hmm. Param one, param two. The second parameter we know it's called or it's named number of guesses because it tells us right here. So I'm gonna replace param two with that. And the first one, I think there is no restriction. We can call it whatever. I will just call it for consistency word list again. So this is kind of our first test. If I run this test, this shouldn't fail here. It's probably going to fail here, but at least I have made progress and one line is already covered. Oh, sorry. There you go. It's failing in uh, line 26, line 26, this one right here. So that's good. And why is that? Because now we see the test is telling us that this object that was created has an attribute remaining misses, which is equal to this thing that we passed. So here it's gonna be self.remaining misses equals to the number of guesses that were available. So of course, we have, we're just, we have just started the game. Again, when you have, that you have three number of three guesses to perform. How many you still have remaining? All of them. So we just assign it directly. If I run the test again, it's now gonna fail in line 27. I am making my 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 like the work line by line. In this case, it's failing here. Why? Because we also see that the game dot word that game sorry has a word attribute, which is a guess word. So here, what I'm going to do is self dot word. It's going to be a guess word. But what's going to have? 
how was I created, creating or constructing guest words? I go back again to my previous tests, the ones that are passing, and I always see that it's one word, the one parameter that is passed. And the answer is simple. It's just, in this case, when you pass a list, you should select one randomly and just create a guest word with that selection randomly. So here, I'm gonna first select selected word. It's gonna be self dot, and I'm invoking here my class method. Select one word of the word list. It's gonna pick one randomly, and I'm gonna just use that selection to create the guest word. If I run it again, we should see it failing in line 28. So we make another step forward because the game seems to be initialized with a list of previous guesses. So this is where the user will keep track of the guesses of the game. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is just self.previousGuesses equals an empty list. And now everything is passing. There is no logic here. This, this test is pretty much just a structure. It's how we're creating it and what attributes we're setting when we need it. Everything else, like it's, there is no logic at all. Um, let's see if this one passes. Now, let me make this one pass. It's failing because the implementation that we gave made number of guesses mandatory. But you can see with this test that number of guesses is not mandatory. It's actually optional because the test is not passing it. Um, actually, it should be fine by default. So it's giving you both things. So here I will just turn this thing into an optional one with five as the default method and they are now both passing. Finally, or not finally, but a kind of structurally, the, we also see this another hint, this test uh, right here, I'm gonna make it fail first. We see that the handman game class has an attribute word list that should be this thing. And seems like you can construct a handman game without passing a single parameter. In this case, it's passing no parameters at all. And of course, these words are gonna be used to construct or to select the randomly selected or chosen word. So first hint is the handman game has a word list attribute. So here we're gonna do word list equals uh, this string. And since like word list is also, we're gonna put none here, it's optional. And we're gonna do if word list is none, we're going to do word list equals to our default word list. Now let's see if it passes, there you go. Can you explain one more time? Yep, I'm gonna run all of them. The word list? Yes, please. So first off, like, before we even start, it's again reading the, the test and the interface and understanding structurally or technically what is going to be this thing. In this case, this is a class before or behind the dot, have a class and then immediately you have an attribute. You know that it's an attribute because it doesn't have parentheses, mm -hmm. right? So it's an attribute. And the attribute actually holds these data. This is what the test is telling you. The class should have a an attribute which is equals to this thing. The attribute, sorry, creating a class attribute is just putting it at the top level of the class. So this is the way you create a class attribute. Yeah. Remember that? Yes, yes. And the actual value of the attribute, it's just this list. So we can just hard coding it right here. Make sense? Yes, yes, okay. 
And then the other part is, it's like we were given clues about the way you can create a handman game in each one of the tests. So first we thought, oh, they are always gonna pass two parameters. And then we read these tests and oh, no, wait, seems like this one is optional. And then we read these tests and say, oh, wait, every parameter is optional. So we have to make now word list option also optional. So I made it equals to none. And I said, if word list is none, select, or sorry, pick, use this one as default. Oh, okay, now I understand. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So all the ones that have test start new game, same, like they are passing. Very good. So now we're gonna work with a little bit more logic and it's a really good one because we started first with only the attempt and we were manually selecting and changing things here. We were just changing here, performing, sorry, running methods directly here. Then we moved to the guess word and we were performing an attempt and it was creating one of these for us. Now we're one step, like one level out and we will do a guess, sorry, here, we're gonna do a guess at a method in the game and this game is gonna give us an attempt, but it's also gonna keep track of the word and the mask and everything. So it's gonna basically put everything back together. It's gonna use the attempt, it's gonna use the guess word, the one that had the mask. Um, so first thing, it's in line by line. The game is created, we, had already, we have already figured that out. Now we're gonna implement the guess method. In this case, we're gonna do I'm going to create it right here. So we see it at the top of the screen. Guess, self, and it receives a letter. Only one letter. So here I'm going to do letter. Self. No. Sorry. That's it. And we see that this, uh, this method returns an attempt how were we creating attempts well we were using the guess word to perform an attempt so in this case sorry we're going to do self.word.perform attempt with the letter we have just received can you repeat that please yep so again, the idea of the, of the hem and game class is that it should be a big orchestrator of things. Um, the, the hem and game will receive a letter, for example, letter Y in this case, and it doesn't know anything about pretty much nothing. It knows nothing. It's, it doesn't know that there is a word that there is, because it, it was basically relying on the other classes to create these structures. For the guest word, for example, it created a guest word class. So when it receives a letter, it doesn't know what to do. It needs to rely on the guest word to create the attempt. Mm -hmm. So here, remember this back from our previous test, the guest word, we had a perform attempt and we passed, so we had one word that was the correct one and we passed one the letter we were trying to guess to this guess word, word.perform attempt. Make sense? Yes, yes, perfect. So I am just going to do that inside the guess, the handman game. I'm gonna say, hey, I'm, I, I am from, I'm looking this from the outside world. I am inter facing with the handman game and saying, hey, handman game, I wanna, this is my guess. And the handman game doesn't know how to use it, it will forward it to the guess board by performing an attempt. And here, that's what we're doing. It's gonna say, hey, self the word, I don't know how to do this, please take 
care of performing the attempt with this letter and give me whatever you received. Okay. And it's going to return that thing, which is what I'm doing right here. So, yeah. Yeah, so I, I was going to say, so when you use the letter, the letter on the parameter for guess, it should be associated with the same letter from perform attempt, right? They are the same, right? Yes. So they need yeah. to be exact match. Okay. Yeah. It's like, for example, it, it's like you are talking to your car and you're trying to unlock it with the remote and you are telling something to the car, but actually the car, again, it's not doing some, it's not doing much. It's just forwarding actions to something else. Open the doors, you know, roll down the window mm -hmm. with, so the car, if you think about the car, it's only that tiny computer that handles the whole thing. So you, with the remote, you say, hey, car open. The car is then forwarding specific actions to each one of the pieces or components that it has. Right, makes sense. So this is the same thing. It receives a letter, but it doesn't know what to do with the letter. It just relies on the guess board that it has previously created to perform the attempt and return its file. And now hopefully if I run this test, we're gonna see it failing, but so, we were tackling line by line. I think that these, all these three lines up to line 54, they should be working. So hopefully it's gonna fail, but it's gonna fail kind of here or maybe here. So we're gonna say, I run it, there you go. So it failed in line 56 right here. And why is that? Because it seems like every time that you try to guess, you need to append the previous guesses, right? Yeah, exactly. You need to keep track of the, get, of, the, of the previous letter. And in this case, it is pretty much as we would be playing, oh, playing handman game here. It's like, you need to keep track of the guesses that I perform. As I'm guessing, you keep, keep, you keep track of the guesses, the previous guesses, and you keep, and then you, of course, every time I fail, you will decrease these. That's the whole state of the game. You're keeping track of the state of the game. Right. So here, um, before I return, what I'm going to do is uh, self dot previous guesses dot append this given letter that I have just received. Actually, I can do it first. Right there. The first thing that I do is I keep track of the state and then I keep the rest of the work. So now the whole test is working. This test is working. This functionality, for example, this, this, functionality, this functionality right here and this functionality right here, they were all already working because I worked individually the guesswork. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this one should already work again, hopefully. Yep, because it's a good one. And now we're gonna work with an incorrect one or with a mess, and this is probably going to fail. I'm gonna run it. There you go, we see it, run, we see it failing. And why is that? Because if the guess is a mess, it should decrease the number of guesses that you have available. So it's exactly what we were talking before. If I, for example, we have to guess A, B, C, and I say, I don't know, D, you're gonna, say no that's a bad one you're gonna write it down so we can keep the state and you're gonna decrease so yeah yeah this count so here in the in the game now that we have this attempt we need to check if attempt does is miss and if it's a miss we'll do self dot remaining misses minus equals one And let me run the test. There you go. Now it's passing. Um, if we have many incorrect ones, it's still working. Everything works as expected. I'm oh, sorry. I, I'm trying not to go back to that white screen. <laughs> and several correct ones seem 
This seems to be working too. Yes, they are both working. I'm going to assume that that works too. Case insensitive. Game wins. So now we're going to deal with the case of winning the game and losing the game. And these, these both, these two tests will probably fail. The way the game works is whenever you try to, whenever you perform a given action, a game, a game in general, any game, it's a huge state machine. You are, you're transferring states, right? So you have your, in this case, your, your game, which can be in different states, playing, um, I don't know, uh, one, it can be in lost, right? In different lost states. And in this case, if we were building a real state machine, it's like you start playing first, and then you, uh, at, at any point you can transition to one, and this is kind of the end of it, or you can transition to lost, and that's the end of it. These are the states of the game, but how can you mark the transition? How can you indicate that the game is changing its state, that it's transitioning to a new state? We do it with exceptions. We say, for example, here, you're playing the game and to signal that the game was won or lost, we're gonna say, raise an exception, that it's not an exception because something went wrong. It's just to signal a change in state. We're gonna say, exception, and it's gonna change the state to one. So in this case, what we know is that we're gonna select a super simple word. And if we guess correctly, that's going to raise a game word exception. So here, this guess method, we're gonna basically do if game is one in this move, we're gonna raise a game one exception. How can you know if the game is one? Yeah, sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, well, I was gonna say you need to put the underscore in between is and one, right? If, if but this is not a variable. This is kind oh, okay. of a, Okay, I thought you were gonna, okay. I thought you were gonna. Yeah, it's, it's like a pseudocode or yeah. algorithmic yeah, okay. preposition. I'm gonna say, if the game is one, I wanna erase this. How, now, now we're gonna translate it into code. Okay. How can you realize uh, if the game is one? Yes. Uh, well, in this case, uh, if the unveil and the and the answer they are the same, yep. it is it is one, right? Yep. Exactly. So we can say if self dot word dot answer is equals to self dot word dot masked, we're gonna raise the game one exception. So here, let's run it again. There you go. It worked. I mean, now it's failing here. It's finished. Failing right here. And here we get more clues about our class. It says, oh, wait, this is something that we haven't seen yet. We see that there is an is finished, and there is an is one, and there is an is lost uh, functions. Is finished, is one, and is lost. These methods, what I'm going to do is just here, def is finished, uh, self. If is lost, I'm gonna create an empty first, is lost, and here is one. These three methods are the ones that I need. And the logic here is gonna be pretty much the same thing as this one. If, for example, oh, right here, if they are the same, return true, in other case, return false. And this one right here is the method that I could use here. And it's gonna be a lot more clear too. Self dot is uh, one, raise game one exception. How can, you, how can you know if the game is gonna be finished? Well, if self dot is one. Or is lost. Or self dot, yeah, exactly is lost, lost, return, true, true, in other case, return, false. And I think we kind of have everything working except 
but we haven't figured out is lot is lost yet. Let me cheat here for a second and should put return false for now. There you go. It just works. I hard coded the solution, which of course it will not last for long, but for now it just makes our test pass. Now we're gonna implement the last one, the last one, and this will require us to make that one work. So what happens here? We're playing a brand new game and game. You have a long word to guess and you have only one attempt. This word is Python and your guess is the letter X. So I'm going to say, this is your guess. I'm going to decrease this to zero. I'm going to say, sorry, you have just lost the game. Yeah, right? rem remaining misses uh, less than one, right? Yes, exactly. So, um, yeah, we can put it uh, if remaining if is miss and self, I decrease this one. If, as you said, self dot remaining misses is less than one, I'm going to raise a game lost exception game lost exception i think our logic is good let's try do you also need to return true no when you raise an exception there is no return okay and you don't do both right like a return true and well no you cannot return true true if and you raise yeah so one function can finish or exit because of two different reasons exception or return but one of them not both if you okay. return you cannot raise if you raise you cannot return okay um you should see that as your 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 functions are going to be kind of a chain of things you call one function that can calls another function that calls another function the return is basically passing the value function by function Mm -hmm. The race is doing this. It's saying we can no longer process this thing. Yeah. So I think our logic is fine. We just run this. Um, is finished is now giving us false. Is sorry, the wrong value, because we are of course hard coding is lost. It's something that we now to need to tackle. So how can we know if the game is lost? Well, we should have it right here. So I'm going to put true. If at any moment the, num the number of remaining misses is less than one, the game is already lost. And here I can just use is lost, which looks a little bit better. And now, there you go, the test is passing. Um, these I think should pass. We're going to try it really quickly. Yep. They are working. Everything that should work, that should work. Should work too. Should work too. We have a lot of tests. There you go. These ones, these are another test that we need to cover. And conceptually is, once you have, this, is, this was our big state machine. You have a game real initialized. Then you were starting to play the game. Then when, uh, when the game was won, for example, you raise an exception and the state transitioned from playing to won. What happens if a user tries to keep playing the game? Now you will raise another exception saying, you cannot do that, basically. You cannot keep playing because the game is already won. So that says that here, if I show you the test that it's failing, it's saying line 84, line, no, uh, here, 356, 356 because this one is not is not raising a game finish exception so this is telling us if 
someone is trying to play with a game that it's either won or lost, of course, we will raise a game is finished exception. So what we can do is pretty simple. If self dot is one is finished, is finished, raise a game finished exception. There you go. Now a test is passing. And already lost, also passed. Make sense? Yes. Let's run all of them. There is one failing. Oh, the case sensitive one, always giving us headaches. And this one is because uh, we need to append the word also in a case lower oh, in insensitive fashion. There you go. So I think test handman game is all the all of them are passing. Test guess word is passing and guess at him is passing. The whole thing is working. Very good. Make sense? Questions? Yes, yes. No, no, it makes sense. I, I would love to have a copy of the code so I can I can slowly digest it, review it and Yep. Um I can push exactly the solution. Okay, yeah, yeah. But great session, uh, Santiago. Thank you so much for, for doing this. Actually, let's add everything. I'm gonna create a new branch. My solution. We're gonna do a little bit of Git magic. And if I update the page, you will see it live solution and here's a branch. Perfect. All right, great session. I'm going to, once the recording is available, I'm gonna post it so everybody else can see it. So smile for the camera. <laughs> and best of luck. Thank you so much. And if you have any other question, let me know. Awesome, thank you. Bye-bye, Santiago.